Hi, welcome back to another episode of My Raw Vegan Journey. This is Angel Lee, and today I'm going to be making raw crackers. We're going to be using sprouted wheat and um, probably chia seed. Yeah, because I don't have enough flax seed. So I'm going to be using chia seeds. Uh, this is probably backwards in the camera, but it's organic sun core foods, earthly goods for you, raw white seeds. They're white chia seeds, not the regular black chia seeds. And uh, I really like these. So let's get on. So what I've done is I have, <clears throat> it's handy to have one of these. It's a uh, strainer. <laughs> Strainer! <laughs> and I use one gallon jars and I soak my wheat berries in this. Do I have enough light? I think I do. Okay, so I put two cups of uh, dried wheat berries into one jar. So, your wheat berries, if you're not familiar, look like this. And you can get them in bulk. So two cups into a jar. You fill it up with enough water to cover about an inch over the berries and let that sit overnight and soak. The next day you rinse, you drain it. Using this wonderful tool, you can sit this on top like this and then just tip it and the berries will stay in the jar and the water will disappear. So you do that, you rinse them, and then you can take one of two things. If you have a dish cloth, you can put that over it with a nice rubber band, ta-da. Or you can take an old tea towel or any kind of t-shirt or anything like that, cut that out put that over top of it and what you will do is you will then turn that jar upside down at like a 40 degree or 45 forget the math this angle <laughs> now I have a um, dish rack well let me take you over there and show you real quick On my dehydrator, since I have such a tiny kitchen, I, I, I do things to reserve space or to maximize my space. So on top of my dehydrator, I put a little towel and a dish strainer, and I can put my um, sprouting goods there, okay? So let's get you back over here. All right, hmm, you need to come down some, there we go. We got everything in view. All right, so I'm doing two batches because I'm making some for a friend, but um, you can just do one. You can actually do a smaller batch, but if you're going to make these, I would suggest making them in a larger batch. So anyway, we're gonna set that aside for now. We'll put that over there and then what we're going to do is we're going to put a couple of handfuls into our blender. With a cup of water. And then we're going to get an extra cup of water because we're probably going to need it. And then we will blend. And I start out on the, this is an Oster blender. It's a Smash Blend 14. And I just start out on low. And increase the speed.
So I used one and a quarter cups of water. And if you noticed, I was adding as I went. So you want to add until it just thickens to where it's not going to blend too easy. We'll dump that and say hello to Taz. Hi. Hey. You. Are you helping? Look at the camera. Hey. So he likes to help. All right, that was nice and thick, and we're pouring that into a separate bowl. And we'll start the process again. We'll add about two good handfuls. The lighting is really bright, isn't it? Maybe I should shut the back door for a minute. That better? Still kind of bright, but okay well we'll work with it all right so there's some water in there so we're going to let that drip out a little bit and then i'm putting two handfuls into the container i'm going to fill this back up to full as we start out with one cup of water So we'll just do a cup and a half and we'll start the process over again. Um, at this point, what I want to do is add my spices, and I'm going to be using caraway seed, some ground onion. salt and I'll need my grinder. If you don't have one of these, I would highly suggest getting one. This is a Hamilton Beach. Most of my products are Hamilton Beach except for my blender and of course my dehydrator, but I like Hamilton Beach. It's it's lasted me a long long time. I've had honey, come on. Let's get down. I've had <clears throat> these for upwards of nine years, give or take. So they've really lasted a good long time. And what I'm going to do is grind up my chia seeds. And since I'm making two batches, <clears throat> Okay, the serving size is two tablespoons, and that gives 10 grams of fat. So we're making a low-fat cracker, and let's see, one, two, and I'm going to use three per batch. So I'll grind up the first batch first, that way I make sure that it's precise. And we just give it a grunt. Mm -hmm. We're going to reserve that and we'll put that in 
last. And then we are going to put about a tablespoon and singing bowl. <laughs> okay, I'm going to use half because I'm running low on supplies here, half powder. half flakes and again use what you have you can put garlic in here if you like um, I might put a little rosemary but then again I might not I might put rosemary in one batch and none in the other so who knows all right we're going to give that a stir and finish off the rest of the wheat berries Mm. might put a little bit of these in to grind up in there and then the rest I'll put in about a tablespoon or so probably two whole seeds into the, the whole mix all right here we go You notice how <laughs> I have an alive trash can come out of there come on I guess he wants me to take the trash can out okay so you come out of there come on you're just being ornery Taz loves to help in the kitchen he loves to help anywhere he can if I'm sewing he likes to help sew. if I'm making art painting Whatever I'm doing, he's got to be there. That's my shadow. Okay, so now we're going to pour this and do this. It's also a good idea to have a nice spatula to clean out your blender and get every bit of this deliciousness out of there. Now, for those of you who can't do wheat, there are many different ways you can prepare this. You can use spelt berries, and they're uh, not so uh, heavy in the gluten if you have a gluten intolerance. I would suggest if you have gluten intolerances not to do this at all, because you know so there's I think there's gluten in most of the grains. Now, unless you were to sprout uh, something like quinoa or something of that nature, maybe some do buckwheat. Um, now, I uh, forgot to put the salt. So I'm gonna put about almost a teaspoon of salt. Not that much because these will condense down and you don't want them to be too awfully salty. So let's, yeah, a tablespoon will do it. We'll put a tablespoon in there and we'll stir this up. And it's going to look like this. You're going to have this blah, <laughs> nice kind of thick porridge looking batter. So, <laughs> Watch my step. 
Then we're going to add in our chia seeds. And this, at this point in the process, we will let this sit because the chia needs time to make uh, all this liquid thick. It's going to soak up any excess moisture and it's going to become a binding agent, just like flaxseed would. I, I really prefer using flaxseed because they really bind well, but um, chia seed works almost as good for me. And plus, flaxseed is lower in fat per tablespoon. Okay, we're just going to stir that up. I'm going to probably let it sit about an hour. That way it has plenty of time to really soak up the excess liquid because we want this to be a thick batter, kind of like um, a little thicker than pancake batter, almost like a cake batter, maybe somewhere around in there. <laughs> it's been so long since I've baked anything because I've been really raw since um, the January of 2020, which is this year, but I've been um, a vegan, a raw, I mean, a high raw vegan for the last three or four years so i really didn't make anything um baking wise i just kind of like steamed my vegetables lightly so that i could preserve as much of the nutrient as i possibly could so anyway if i flounder at my words trying to figure out how to compare stuff just bear with me <laughs> that smells good I think I'm going to leave that just you know what let's put a little nutritional yeast in how's that sound let's give it a little oomph I think that would be good yeah give it a little cheesy flavor so we'll make these cheesy chia crackers What the heck? Let's put two tablespoons. I have another bottle. This is kind of my go-to for uh, some B vitamins. Uh, it's inactivated yeast. A lot of people, a lot of... I'm in transition. So let me explain something real quick. I said I went fully raw in January of 2020. That would be kind of a little bit of a, um, not full truth, not full disclosure. Full disclosure would be, I'm 99% fully raw, and the other 1%, I might use something like this to get the B12, since I don't uh, use almond milk that's from the store anymore. I make my own almond milk when I, when I want it, um, and that's rare. It's like if I want to make a raw gravy, I'll use almond milk, which I will share that recipe in another episode. But um, I use this sometimes to get those B vitamins. And um, sometimes I'll use cashews. Not often, but sometimes I like to make a creamy cashew spinach dip, which is really good. Or um, I'll make a creamy cashew cheese for veggie cheeseburgers. So I'm not 100% fully raw yet. I'm in transition. So that means that I'm adjusting as I go to a more optimum diet for my species specific lifestyle. So on that note, let's get back to this and let's get that stirred up. And by all means, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. I would love to answer questions. I would love to chit chat with you. So, um, yeah, let's talk. Okay, you can see just by the little bit of time that we have 
look how that's, well, I guess I could get it up here where you could see it. It's starting to really thicken up. And that's a good thing. You want that. Okay. I'm going to cover that. We're going to set it aside. We're going to put the timer for one hour. And we're off. I am going to turn this video off, this part of the video. I'm going to go do some editing while this is setting and congealing. And then we're going to come back and I'm going to show you how we're going to put it on the dehydrator sheets and what temperature and how long to leave it in. Okay? Ciao! And we're back! It's time to put the batter on the dehydrator sheets and get it into the dehydrator. If we could get this off. Ah, piece of pie. <laughs> Isn't that what um, uh, Johnny Five said? <laughs> Johnny Five is alive. Did you ever watch that show? If not, that's a good one. Okay, let's give this a quick stir. Oh, look at that. Mmm, smell. Smells delightful. <laughs> let's actually give it a taste test, too. Oh my goodness, that's gonna be good, good, good. Okay, now I'm gonna use a measuring cup. Mmm, oh yeah. Move that out of the way. I'm probably gonna put two cups per sheet. And then we'll just kind of, let's see if I can ooh, shake it, shake it up, baby, <laughs> twist and shout. All right, so we're going to spread this out a little bit. I'm going to set it back up here out of the way, bring it a little closer. Well, you know what, maybe I'm thinking I'm going to do two and a half. Let's try two and a half. Yeah. Because I still want this to stay kind of thick because it's going to thin out quite a bit once it dehydrates. And you just kind of want to spread it like you would icing on a cake. Try to get it as even as possible. And then take your straight edge. And depending on how much of a perfectionist you are, if you're a perfectionist like me, I want it to look nice and I want my edges to be kind of even because I want to get uh, uniform crackers out of this. And so anytime, any place you see there might be like it's thinning and you can see the, the Teflex sheet, you want to kind of just smooth that over a little bit. And there we have that. Okay, that looks pretty good, except for maybe just a little bit more on this side. Okay, next what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a pizza cutter, and we're going to score this. So that will just mean I'm going to run this right through the center one way, and then I'm going to go through the center another way. 
and then I'm going to go center of each square one direction and then the center of each square the opposite direction and that will give me a good size cracker now if I want to make those smaller I can cut double but I like my crackers big because I like to dip with them that is one tray done and we're going to stick that in the dehydrator and trade places. We're going to be able to tell the difference if you're doing like two separate batters. Um, that's why I like putting um, whole seeds in stuff like I'm making the rye. The first batch is going to be like a rye cracker. I could have used rye berries for this to make it more authentic but I didn't have any and I haven't been to the store yet. So I'm using what I have. And that's another thing. Use what you have on hand. Don't have to make a necessarily make a special trip to go get something. If you have something on hand, use it. It's that easy. But if you want them to come out exactly like mine do, then get the ingredients. Okay, we're going to do the second batch, same way. Give that a little stir. I'm probably going to get two sheets per batch. Yep, exactly as I thought. There's two cups and probably another half. Perfect. Yes, perfectly. So we can safely say that this made five cups worth of batter. Two and a half cups per sheet. Shimmy, shimmy, shake, shake, shimmy, shimmy, shake, shake. <laughs> Not cooking is fun. You know, um, being, I'm kind of like a, a raw vegan fruitarian in the making and it's such an easy lifestyle because most of my foods, the way that I eat them, I just pop off a banana off of the bunch, peel it and eat it. That is super fast. I mean, no prep time. Except maybe if I want to wash the bananas after I got them home from the store. Because, you know, you don't know who's touched, put their hands on it, and where their hands have been. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, living the lifestyle that I do, it is after the initial learning curves and transitioning and getting used to eating differently. It's actually a simpler form of living it's a it's a simpler lifestyle and it frees up a lot of my time to be creative to work on my sewing projects my art projects okay so once again and I'm only going to do this for the two trays I've got two more to go but I'm not going to bore you with any more uh, than I necessarily have to so just again Spread that out evenly, as evenly as possible, and then we'll score it once again. Make uh, corn crackers, and um, or corn tortillas actually, and then I would take, uh, I would cut like this, but then I would go one step further and I would cut on the diagonal in each of the four squares and make little tortilla chips. Well, Google just started up all by itself, so I must have said the magic word. So I'm back. I was talking about corn tortilla chips and I made raw corn tortilla chips, but uh, I would cut on the diagonal. If I missed that in the last part, if that got cut off, I would cut my squares and then on each four squares I would cut the diagonals. Google did it to me again. I'm going to quit talking about how I cut. 
Anyway, so much for that tutorial. We have the second tray ready to go in the dehydrator. Let's do that. <laughs> Okay, this is the end of the video tutorial. <laughs> I want to just add a few things that I missed while I was doing the video because, you know, when we're trying to multitask, sometimes we forget things. One, soaking your wheat berries or rye berries or spelt berries or any kind of berry, when you're soaking those, uh, and sprouting them, it takes about two to three days. Uh, depending on the humidity in your house, the heat, and all of that other stuff. Now, I'm in Ohio, and the temperature outside was about 35, 40 degrees, something like that. And inside my house, I have my thermometer set on 80 degrees. And I also have um, humidifiers going in two bedrooms. Well, I have two bedrooms, so I have a humidifier for each room. And actually, it's one bedroom and a sewing room because the guest room is the sewing room. But anyway, um, so it, it kind of varies. So you want to sprout your seeds until they have like a quarter to half inch tail and then they're ready. And the reason why we're sprouting those is to unlock all the nutrients and get rid of all the anti-nutrients. When you just use grains or beans or anything like that in their natural dried form, they're toxic and they have properties in them that stop you from absorbing any nutrients from them. And so even though this is not a very optimal food, it is a good transitional food and like I said earlier in my video I'm transitioning to a completely raw fruitarian lifestyle and that means I'm coming off of a sad diet a standard American diet where I ate a bunch of junk food a bunch of sweets and breads and pastas and pastries and fat I mean french fries from uh, various restaurants. I'm not going to drop names, but um, I ate a lot of junk that made me swell up with a s massive amount of inflammation. And I'm talking 263 pounds of inflammation. And as you see in my bot, my uh, my video, I'm actually currently at 160 pounds. And in the beginning of this year in january i weighed 195 and so like what eight months later nine months later i'm down to 160 and i've been working out so that said back to why we were sprouting we want to make sure that we're getting the nutrients out of the the things that we're sprouting so um we want to let them grow little tails so they can begin to grow because now they're coming out of their dormant stage and they're starting a new plant. And that means that everything is bioavailable at this point. Once again, like I said, this is not an optimal food, but it is an acceptable food for tr when you're in transition. And this is kind of like my go-to when I want to crunch something but without all the guilt and without all the fat this is my go-to when I'm having um, emotional flare-ups maybe I'm, I may feel I need comfort food and this is my comfort food so there are ways to have your comfort food without really breaking the bank when it comes to your digestive health okay um, freeze-dried Raw peas are another good source of crunch. I mean, those things are just wow. But again, we're, we're working toward having an optimal food source. Next, dehydrator. I have an Excalibur 9 tray. You may have a 4 tray or a 5 tray. If you don't have a 9 tray, you're probably going to want to start out with 
um, a, a cup and a half and see if that will fit on the smaller tray and go up to two cups. I, when I used to do uh, a four tray Excalibur, I could probably fit two cups. It would be just, just right, just the right thickness. And you always want to go at least a quarter inch to a half inch thick, probably about a half inch. Mine is a quarter inch because I want crispy. But if you want something thicker, just make the batter a little thicker. But anyway, um, so you're going to need a good dehydrator and not a round one. You need a square dehydrator, whatever brand you get. it. You, you need to be able to put a Teflex sheet on it so that you can spread it out and make your scoring. And um, another thing to uh, take note is don't press too hard when you're scoring. All you want to do is just make the lines so that you can break the crackers open. Now, I put this in at 125 degrees for the first hour, okay? So after that hour is up, that just means that I want to get the inside of the batter the same temperature as the outside. So um, this prevents any mold or anything else happening. And then after that, I turn it down to 115 and I will leave that in there for several hours. And I will put, that in the description box because this video is already long enough as it is but once these go through their cycle i will give you the exact time that i put mine in and again i want you to understand this may vary from house to house because there are definitely other factors heat uh humidity dryness depends on what your house conditions are. So there's a little wiggle room in everything. And typically this takes close to 24 hours to complete. Now, are you working the 24 hours? No, you're off creating art. There we go. Or you're doing music or you're dancing or you're watching TV or you're out with your friends and you can let the dehydrator just go and do its thing because it's it's got a mind of its own it's gonna go Ooh, we're gonna do this and that's it <laughs> while you are freed up to do whatever you like so basically your total work time is about 30 minutes and um give or take 30 to 45 depending on how long it takes you to drain and rinse your seeds and get all your tools together stuff like that so anyway i want to thank you for sticking with me this long in the video and if you like my content please click the subscribe button tap on the notification bell and click all so that you will be notified of future uploads i have intentions of uploading one video per week to get started and I'm I'm making a commitment to myself first because I like sharing my skills and my knowledge with people and I like helping people so um, and I'm a Taurus so I'm a big foodie I mean I love good food what Taurus doesn't they're not a real Taurus if they don't you know what I mean <laughs> but I love creating recipes and and I love experimenting in my kitchen so I like sharing when I have something that comes out really really super good I like sharing that so I will be uploading at least once a week and I'm gonna work on keeping that commitment unless something happens that I just can't and at that point I will just send a shout out to say hey sorry can't upload this week see you next week but anyway have a great day be fruitful and have a fruitabulous life thanks peace